So welcome to uh, Ted Stamp Paintings at uh, Mind Space. It's up through October 29th. And it's a survey of Ted Stamp's paintings and works on paper and documentation of his uh, street interventions called Designator. Uh, it's one of the first shows of his work uh, in New York City in quite a while. So uh, on view we've got uh, highlights from a couple of different bodies of work, including his uh, tag drawings, his Zephyr paintings, uh, Wooster paintings, and uh, Dodger paintings, as well as a couple of drawings. And uh, the works are all uh, from around uh, the mid to late 1970s, early 80s. He's an artist that died uh, in 1984 at the young age of uh, 39 years old. And uh, he's a critical inter sort of, sort of critical bridge between um, minimalism, post minimalism, and So uh, in the back uh, of Ted's show, we have a couple of different um, pieces of kind of interesting documentation. Uh, we have three photographs by the well-known photographer, Abby uh, Robinson. And these are photographs of Ted um, from the late 1970s to early 80s. Uh, that's a photograph of him jumping into the swimming pool at CW Post Campus. Uh, Russell Maltz, who's an artist based in Soho uh, curated a series of interventions in the empty swimming pool at that campus during the late 70s. And um, they went on for about 1976 to 1979. And that culminated in a big uh, show about the pool project, which is what it was called at Artist Space. So the photographs on the ends are um, images from the, the show that took place at Artist Space. And they're documentation of uh, Ted himself. The center one is a more recent photograph, um, meaning a more recent print of Ted in the studio in 1980. And uh, Ted was based at uh, 101 Wooster in Soho, between, uh, I think, Spring and Prince is where that was. Uh, what we have here on the table are some pretty, um, well, never before seen, actually, some pretty rare black and white photographs of some street interventions that Ted did during the mid-1970s. These were called uh, his designator series. And he basically took one of his Dodger shapes, had a template cut out of um, sheet metal, and then used it to tag uh, specific buildings in and around New York um, that had specific um, meaning to him. So he'd go there and um, sort of repeat a process where he would tag something with a, a black Dodger shape, he'd go back and then re-tag it with a silver Dodger shape, and then go back into it again with these sort of uh, black and silver T uh, shapes. And these were really rare, uh, really rare images of uh, documenting that um, body of work that have never been shown before. Uh, this is another one that um, supposedly was taken on a window at the clock tower space in Soho. Uh, so again, this is uh, spray paint directly on glass overlooking uh, Lower Manhattan. Um, these have never been, never been shown before, and they come from uh, a private collection um, where his work is being held. So. Yeah, so it was great. So I mean, we have sort of highlights of um, you know uh, documentation about Ted, works he did um, you know on the street in public. We've got some drawings. We have some tag pieces, uh, and then highlights of a couple of different bodies of uh, of work from his uh, various painting series. Uh, the only thing we don't have, and again, Ted was um, you know he was someone who was really interested in summarize summarize up his body of work in that he was interested in two artists in particular, one of which was Ab Reinhardt, particularly his like late black paintings, and the work of An Kuwara, which is totally conceptual, cerebral work. So Ted was somewhere in between those two kind of extremes. Um, and uh, it was very interesting that he was using a lot of conceptual processes to make the work. So he would roll dice to make a painting, or determine the number of paint layers and the number of marks. He'd do things in collaboration with other artists where uh, someone who was invited over a studio into his studio would um, 
sort of make a mark on a, on a notebook page, and then Ted would make a mark on a corresponding notebook page in response to that mark. They would then date, stamp it, and uh, seal it uh, to kind of uh, recognize that transaction between the two of them. So, um, yeah, he was really working with conceptual processes really early on and bringing them back into painting. Um, and in my opinion, re reinvigorating painting. Okay. Good enough? Good enough. Cool.